Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Okay, we're mounted in the chuck, and we're going to do a little bit of hollowing, turn it down a bit, bring it back up. I'm actually going to take this, put it over here in case I get into trouble. It's kind of nice to be able to move that. <laughs> bring the speed up a bit. First thing I'm going to do is really I just want to clean up the face. So I'll just do a pull cut right here. It just gives me a, a flat starting point for my tool. Okay, now we're just going to start pushing in here like so, and I'm going to be doing a real rough hollowing out because I'm doing more technique today and I want this to actually look kind of rugged anyway. I want this when I'm done with it to look like it's 100 years old. And one thing I did on the other bowl, I made the walls pretty thin. This one I'm actually going to make the walls thicker so it will look older, so it will look like it was you know, made to be used in a kitchen or something back in the 1800s. So that's about the thickness I want to make my walls there. So turn the lathe off just a quick second. I want to lower my tool rest a bit. Just come down to here. I want the angle to be just about like so, almost like it's against my hip when I'm doing this. I get my best cut that way. So we'll turn it back on by hitting the on, <laughs> not the off. <laughs> so it's down here. You're kind of flying the handle as you're turning this way, but you can't help it. Unless you're John Jordan and he likes to straddle the lathe. And it helps when you're six foot six or something like that. <laughs> now I'm just kind of looking down the pike here, looking at my edge here to see how thick I need to make the wall. Come here, I'm going to pull across. Now, I can overhang this tool a little bit because it's pretty thick steel. If you're using a smaller tool, the more you overhang, the more vibration you'll get. So it's just one of those techniques that if I get too deep, I'm going to pull this tool rest back and angle it inside so I don't reach so far. And you can tell this is really dry, brittle wood. I mean, I've had this stuff sitting in my shop for like 10 years at least. So I know it's been dried out for quite a while and it was dried before it was put up. So it's almost in a rotted state because of the bees being in it. So it's what you call ugly wood which makes beautiful stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna move my tool rest and start working on the center a little bit more and make sure my walls are the same thickness and then we're gonna finish up the bottom. Now I've gone ahead and taken the blank off of the chuck. Uh, I trimmed the end as best I could with the parting tool and then used the Japanese pull saw to get the rest of it off. So I've got a nub here on the bottom here that I've got to clean up. Well, how do you hang on to this? Well, this is called a Longworth chuck. And it's really cool in that it's got all these little rubber gripper things. And it's two plates and the plates spin like this. And as they spin, these scroll in and out to fit any size thing you have on here. Now, how's all that work? Well, it's on the back side where it gets really interesting because you have these little wing nuts that you tighten the rubber things down with. So when they're loose, you can scroll this back and forth and you can kind of see in here, that's where it's hanging into the uh, chuck jaws right there. You can see how it's got a metal base that fits right into a dovetail. So that's held really securely. But anyway, the nice thing about this is, is there's other types like this, but they have holes drilled at different increments and you literally have to unscrew each one of the rubber things, screw it into a hole, test it to see if it fits. And there are four pieces too, because they go onto each jaw of the chuck. So it's a lot of messing around. Well, the Longworth chuck is a lot easier to use, a lot faster to scroll it in to where it pinches up tight, tighten the wing nuts down, you're ready to rock and roll. Now you don't want to spin this thing very quickly. I'm going to grab a swept back uh, spindle gouge to do this. I could use a bowl gouge if I wanted to, but that would be a little bit different. Um, so when I start this up, I've got it probably at about 
oh, 300 RPM. And believe me, that feels plenty fast because we're back into that feet per second thing because the feet per seconds out here is just hauling butt. Down here, it's not doing so much. So I'll just take a slow cut when I get there. But I just want to get rid of the nub here and make a nice little flat bottom that's a little bit concave, convex. I want, when it's sitting flat, I want the bottom to do this. I want it to dome inside so it sits on the outer edges. And the shape I wound up making on this reminds me a lot of, have you been to any of the Renaissance fairs? I've only been to a couple and I don't dress up, but I've been to them. And this looks like some of the wooden uh, wear, wear, train wear that they'd use. This would actually be like a soup bowl or something that they'd drink out of. So there's a whole market for making an antiquated looking stuff. And so when you use wood like this, it tears out and then combine it with a sandblasting cabinet, <laughs> you get some pretty good results. So anyway, I'm going to do a pull cut here, just clean this edge, blend that in a little bit. And lo and behold, I'm not going to sand anything. We're going to let the sandblasting cabinet do it for us. So once I get this exactly where I want it, we're going to go have some fun with the sandblaster. So now we're going to have some fun, right? Well, let me give you a little information on a sandblasting cabinet. I bought this one at a Harbor Freight, I'll be honest. It didn't cost that much because I didn't know if I wanted to get into this full time. There are things that you need when you're going to do sandblasting. One is you have to have a compressor and not one of those little pancake compressors. You need a big one. Mine's only about a 20 gallon compressor with like three horsepower, so it can barely keep up with this. If you get one of those big canister types, you're going to be rocking and rolling. You can do some really extreme sandblasting. Uh, a guy named Bill Luce, L-U-C-E, if you go ahead and Google his name and look at some of his work, fantastic stuff. He's got a really cool setup. He can do some just pure art basically. Uh, to give you an idea, anyway, you see the cabinet, right? Well, the cabinet has these neat little gloves. If you ever took a science class, you played with those too in these air cabinets and stuff. And then you have your hose in here. This orange hose is going back to my compressor. This hose right here is going to a tube that's all the way down here that goes into this hopper where you put all the blasting material. So this is glass bead material. It's white which is good because when using a light wood, you don't put a dark color into the wood because some of this stuff will embed into the grain of the wood. Um, get my glove out. <laughs> but anyway, also, you can't see it, but I have this hooked up to my uh, air system in my shop, so it's going to pull out some of the dust as it goes so I can still see better. Also, inside this cabinet, there are no lights, so I have a couple of magnetic lights that I put in there, LEDs, and just pop them up there. And they're cheap, and so if I wind up burning them up after, you know, a year of this, you know, it doesn't matter. But I just wanted to show you something. I was playing around with um, what parts of the wood would blast the best and what grains would work. So to give you an idea, let me put this over here. Let's see. That's not it. It's right here. <laughs> this was side grain on the blank. And you can see, let me turn it that way it really etches in deeply. So that orientation is nice. Over here, uh, let's see, this is the top grain. So it's sitting on the wood like that. And you can see it's a little more friable, but it gives you a cool effect on this side. So you can do some things that, you know, they're different. But look at here, doesn't it look like that sand or dirt piled up there between some pieces of wood? That's the hard grain and the soft grain. So it's a really neat effect. Then if you look at end grain, you can see how it can blast through there too. And what Bill Luce does is he actually blasts through so you see through the hard wood. There's no soft wood in between it and he makes these really skeletal looking shapes which is cool. But you're going to wind up with certain orientations that are going to be really, really fragile. So you have to take care and pay attention to that. And you have to leave some wood intact. If you take it all out it's going to fall apart. But anyway, one thing is I was talking about the blasting material. Let me open this up right here. This is 80 grit glass bead and it's silica basically. So there it is. It's just like pure white sand. Very fine stuff. Really nice. Now one thing you want to be careful of uh, when you have this in your shop and you have all that blowing and everything like that, wear breathing protection unless you have a super locked up system because it's I think it's called silica poisoning. It gets in your lungs. Glass in your lungs is not a good thing. Anyway, you just take a big old scoop of this, and I'm going to pour it into here and move the glove out of the way. And it's going to go right down into that hopper down on the bottom. So you can see 
I fill it up and that little plastic, the metal tube that's in there is going to suck up that material. So I just want to put another one in there so I have a bunch to work with here. And this isn't that expensive to get this stuff. And they make all sorts of different types. I actually have a box down here, didn't even open because I knew it'd be too soft. It's actually walnut shells. So if you're doing something where you want a really satin look, that might be really good. But anyway, so we're gonna get this all locked up, have our bowl in there, and we're gonna start blasting. Well, we've got our vacuum system turned on. One really cool effect is it fills the gloves up, basically it sucks the atmosphere out of here. So this is a very well-sealed box, apparently. I like this. So I'm gonna grab the bowl. I got it in my hands here. And now we're just gonna start blasting. And it's kinda like spray painting. You wanna start off on the edge and then come across. So here we go. You can see already the, um, dr uh, what you call it, the uh, torn grain that we had is a being obliterated. And I can already see some depth in there. Now one thing you'll run into if you have a compressor as small as mine, this thing wants 90 cubic feet per second or so. Minute? Oh my god, a second would be too fast. <laughs> um, you might have to spray a little bit, you know, take a break for a minute or two, let the compressor fill back up. Uh, the other thing is if it stops cutting, that means it's not sucking up any of the grain in there. And make sure I got my feed going to shake that a little bit. There we go. Now we're back to it. But anyway, that's it. It's just how deep you want to go and how much of an effect you want on the wood. So I rounded these edges, so I'm going to go up here and kind of blend them, burn them away a bit because I want this to look antique, right? And that is getting to be really cool. When we bring this out, you're going to just be amazed at the way the shape's going to look on this. This looks like something that has been out in the uh, desert, I guess, for years. And if you don't have a uh, dust vacuum system hooked up, you're going to have a real hard time seeing what you're doing after just a few minutes because these things will fill up with dust quickly. And speaking of dust, Remember, wear breathing protection if you're doing this because you want to stay safe. Now, while I got this in here, we made a sphere the other day where I had some really bad torn out grain on the end. Well, I think I figured out something to do to get rid of that. So we're going to sandblast this too and see how it turns out also. This is ash, so it's a much harder wood, so see if I make any headway with it. So <laughs> if I, I'm going to work on this a little bit longer. And then we'll see what the bowl looks like and what the ball looks like, and uh, then we'll talk about finishes. Well, my ball idea failed. The ash is way too tough uh, for my compressor. I can't put out enough oomph to cut into it very much. It did kind of satin the finish a little bit, but eh, didn't do what I wanted. However, this came out awesome. Look at the depth in there. I mean, that is so cool. And look at the rim here. See how it's scalloped almost like ocean waves? I mean, this looks like it's been laying out in the desert for decades. I mean, it is just really, really cool. Even the bottom ate away like that. That's neat. So you can just leave it like this. Or if you want to put a finish on it, you can really do about anything you want, but you can't use paper towels or cloths because it's going to catch inside of there. So I'm using some Watco Danish oil and uh, this is a flux brush for solder, or soldering and stuff, welding. But that helps me just drip it into there. And this thing will soak up like crazy. So you just want to put a few coats on here and just let it just soak in. And it will really make a cool look. Because once this dried out a bit, I thought, wow, it's way too dark. But then look how it dried out to there. So now, again, it looks antique and rustic. So anyway. That is how you do some sandblasting. It's really kind of fun. So if you want to try it, go get one and uh, experiment a bit because you can do a lot more pretty stuff than just this. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust, built to turn wood, enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.